Hello everyone, I hope this wee video finds you all safe and well again. It's a video for those who prefer to watch and listen rather than read long letters. And just like the letters, it's in sections for you to scroll through to the bits that interest you the most. So let's begin with a Covid update for schools. The First Minister gave a speech on Tuesday, just Tuesday there, 1st of February, noting that Covid case numbers remain high. It's certainly very evident in our schools across the country that COVID's a continuing problem and that includes our own. I'd like to thank you though for your continued support with the increased use of the lateral flow tests, the LFTs. Due to this extra vigilance, we have seen an increase in the cases being caught early and before the symptoms have been brought into the school. However, it is important to note that the, the high levels of absence that we're facing are not primarily down to people's contracting COVID, but it's also due to the impact of the self-isolation that comes with it. Add to that, staff absence due to self-isolation themselves or within their families, and the level of disruption to pupil learning is very concerning. Our staff who remain in the school are working tirelessly to provide all our youngsters, both in and out of the school, with the best possible care and education. Our pastoral teams remain on hand to help families and our staff continue to upload lessons to Google Classrooms to help youngsters keep pace with the lessons they're missing. Where there's a subject specialist available, either live or on VC, whether in Oban or Tyree and vice versa, then the senior classes will receive this specialist cover support from whoever's available. That's a huge benefit of the sister school approach between Oban and Tyree. However, as in the case in almost every other school in the country, if there are no subject specialists, then the class will have to be covered by a fully qualified teacher, but not one necessarily who is a subject specialist in that area. The work the cover teacher will support the classes with will be set by subject specialists, however, it will be set by the PT or if possible, the absent teacher will set it. Although pupils can keep pace with the learning as practically as possible, when they come back to school, we would ask you to encourage them to ask for help from their teacher and to attend any supported study sessions. These sessions are voluntarily led by teachers after school and at lunch times. These sessions are also available by VC between Oban and Tyree. So no matter what school you're in, you'll still get access to a, a VC supported study. And I'm, I'm also pleased to announce that our local authority will once again fund supported study sessions at Easter. And please, when that comes out, get your children to sign up for these. The First Minister also indicated that some relaxation to rules in schools could be made should the school management believe that these are possible. Now, it's my intention not to relax any of the current arrangements at the moment. We will reevaluate that position a couple of weeks after the midterm break, once we get a better picture of how things are progressing. This decision that I'm taking will ensure that the high levels of protection currently in place will help keep the COVID cases from increasing in the school. Clearly, they may still rise should pupils mix without precautions out of the school over the holiday. I've added the, the link to the guidance that I always give in the letter, but you can just Google Scottish Government Schools Guidance and you'll find it. So now let me turn to the SQA. I mentioned in my last letter that the SQA intended to proceed with holding exams this summer. I also noted that there were three scenarios and as I predicted, they've announced that they'll proceed with scenario two. The exams are still on, but they'll need, or the pupils will need extra support. That extra support will be offered for all learners who are taking National 5 higher and advanced higher courses in 2022. SQA will provide revision support for all those courses that have an exam. That will be tailored to reflect the different types of question papers, any modifications to the questions that have already been put in place and the type and the volume of content that's assessed in each question paper. The question papers and the exams are just so different that it's a, a bespoke arrangement for each. There's a link that shows some of the detail of what this individualised support for each subject looks like. And, you know, feel free to check out the link in the letter or you can just Google SQA 2022 exam update and that will come up along with some frequently asked question guidance as well. So let me turn to options for the forthcoming year. Interviews with S2 pupils to choose their electives for S3 is almost complete. 
and many thanks to the parents and carers who have joined the meetings that we've been holding virtually. The final deadline for those completed uh, S2 into S3 forms is on Tuesday 15th of February, so that's first uh, Tuesday back. Parents and carers are S3 pupils who have already received an email with information about their child's interview and a copy of their individual choice form. Uh, please make a note of it, make sure you fully understand it and ask questions if you need to. The interviews for those begin on Tuesday the 15th of November, first Tuesday back, and the information about the subjects involved can be found on the Google Classroom code and they're all in the letter. So every uh, subject area has a Google Classroom code you get information from. I would encourage you to discuss fully with your children uh, what will be involved beforehand with these subjects and what your options are and discuss it with a guidance teacher and please, please join the meeting virtually. The final deadline for the completed S3 into S4 forms is Monday the 28th of February. The options process will then continue with S4 pupils from Monday the 28th of February and S5 pupils from Monday 21st of March. Again, parents will be sent emails with the individual interview times and choice forms and the codes are in the letter. Our departments have always uh, also been running virtual information sessions and my thanks to the go to the parents that have already attended these sessions. They've asked many useful questions. Argyll College will also be running some virtual sessions for the courses that are offered to our senior pupils uh, in Oban. There are a couple of potential courses that Argyll College will link to Oban and Tyree. And I uh, will put all the links on the screen now. Live and Learn, we've had them in before. It's a, a, a company that does growth mindset and vision type skills. And they'll be in Tuesday the 15th to Thursday the 17th February. Following the sessions on, or following on from the sessions in October, I should say, they'll be able to build on that S4 to S6 uh, participation with these sessions to give them effective strategies for focus revision for the upcoming exams. Uh, Jen Kemp, who some of you will have met from Live and Learn, will also deliver a bespoke parent care session on Tuesday the 15th of February from 6 till 7 o'clock. And all parents from Oban and Tyree are invited to join the session and that will help parents with the strategies to support children at home as well. So turning my attention to something that happened this week that was very important and that was we had a results meeting with local councillors. Uh, so that was on Wednesday. The local councillors were invited into a meeting, or when I say invited in, invited into an online meeting uh, that involved uh, last year's SQA results and to speak to the pupils about their learner journeys and their experiences of learning during the pandemic. The pupils for Tyree and Oban spoke very well about their experiences and the councillors were all very impressed with the excellent results from both schools and they commented on the wide variety of courses on offer. And they thanked staff for all their hard work in supporting our pupils so effectively. As well as the very detailed letters and the videos full of links to even more information, it's of course our desire to provide you with a variety of support. Much of that comes from the ability for everyone to have conversations with guidance teachers, principal teachers or family liaison officers, yeah, class teachers in primary too. Whatever information you need, we pass on. If there's anything that you wish to ask, we answer your specific questions. But please remember, email first, unless it's urgent, because our staff are teaching and uh, they will answer your questions, but they'll, they'll be able to answer them when, you're, when they're free. One of the benefits of COVID is the IT lessons learned. And so all the live lessons that we would normally run are now on video. So parents previously unable to attend sessions can watch the support information at a time that's convenient to them. There's a few of these videos uh, that are available now online. Indeed, uh, Mr Champion's video on the workshop that he ran with regard to learning and revision. Uh, he ran that for parents recently. That's now on YouTube. You can see that. Or there's the Guide to People Voice sessions that was delivered by Helen Hope. And there's many others on the YouTube channel. And I'd ask you that you please subscribe for the notifications. And every time we upload something, you'll get a, a wee ping that says, you know, new helpful video available for you. But it's all about keeping you informed of what's going on. But you need to watch and you need to read. When we have less concerns about the impact of COVID, then we will move to more live sessions, uh, whilst we will retain a bit of digital delivery as well, and that will ensure that everybody can access our support. High standards and expectations. Now, 
as we come back into new term, it's important to reinforce this. All schools place a high degree of attention on standards and we're no different. We expect pupils to adhere to our basic rules. Pupils should come to school on time and uniform with the necessary kit, equipment that they need for that day. They should show respect for themselves and to others. And if pupils don't adhere to these basic rules, then we need to take the opportunity to discuss that with them and often their parents. We need to understand the reasons for them not adhering to the rules and how we can support them. And this will always require a conversation. We can't simply ignore a breach of standards when the kids walk in the door in the morning. We take the opportunity to respectfully speak to them and find out what on earth is going on and then we often speak to the parents as well. We need to challenge the pupils who refuse to follow the rules as well as understand the needs of the pupils who do. Our family liaison officers often pick up pupils from home. Our guidance teachers provide uniform. Our teachers give out kit. Our office staff send texts warning a late coming. We are all playing a, a role in maintaining these high standards and I would ask parents to play that role too. I would also ask parents to take the off repeated support that we keep saying every time I send a letter or do a video. And by doing so, there'll be more support and there'll be a less necessary challenge. So what is that support available? Well, as always, should any pupils or parents have any questions or concerns, in the first instance, please contact your clan guidance teacher if you're in Oban, or the PT primary or the PT secondary if you're in Tyree. And you can do that by using the Contact Us page on the website. Please remember my continuing offer, a very genuine offer of support. If you need pastoral, subject, IT or even financial support, please contact us and we'll do everything we can to help you and your family. I hope you all have a lovely midterm holiday next week and I look forward to seeing you when we're all back in school. Thanks very much.